Welcome, everybody. It is the week of Monday, March 8th, 2021. My name is Rebecca Morris. I'm the founder and the president of the Arizona Builders Exchange. And we are getting together each week to bring you some uh, updates as to what we're working on, what uh, project opportunities and business leads we find for you if you're in the Arizona architecture, engineering, or construction market. We've got some really good stuff for you. So I'd like to highlight some open procurement opportunities. Kristen Amato, our senior public side researcher. What kind of good project opportunities have you found for us in the last week or so? It has been a, actually a pretty busy week, but I've been able to narrow it down to three for you today. Um, so the first one on my list is with ADOT. They are requesting RFQs for design build services for ITS infrastructure along the I-19 from the U.S. border to the I-10. This project will include design and construction of new multi-duct fiber optic conduit, fiber optic cable, new pull boxes, as well as two new node buildings. The project has an estimated valuation of $23 million, and this will actually be a two-step solicitation. So the initial RFQs are due in early April. Um, ADOT will then release a shortlist tentatively in May. Um, for firms being submitted, uh, invited to submit price proposals, which are expected to be due by the end of the summer. And then they're hoping to award this contract by the fall of 2021. Uh, the next one on my list is with Maricopa County. They are requesting RFQs for CMAR services for the Southeast Justice Center in Mesa. This project was actually previously advertised as an IFB and awarded last summer. That contract has since been terminated, so the new contract would involve picking up construction where the previous contractor left off. The overall project includes construction of an approximately 109,000 square foot two-story courts facility, including new courtrooms, administration offices, adult probation facilities, as well as renovations to the existing facilities. This project has an estimated valuation of 24 to 27 million dollars. There is a virtual pre-submittal meeting scheduled for the end of this week, and then the RFQs are going to be due in late March. And the architect for this project is Gould Evans. And then the last one on my list for today is with the city of Tucson. They are requesting RFQs for construction administration services for the 22nd Street from Kino uh, Parkway to Tucson Boulevard project. Um, this project is a segment of a larger project that will design and construct improvements along the 22nd Street corridor from the I-10 to Tucson Boulevard, including the addition of new travel lanes, bridges over railroad tracks, intersections and improvements, etc., um, in order to promote mobility, capacity, and safety along that route. Um, the overall project is expected to cost $70 million. There is a virtual pre-submittal meeting scheduled for this week. And then those RFQs are going to be due in late March. The design firm for this project is AECOM. And the city did mention that it plans to use the CMAR delivery method for this segment. Um, and they hope to begin construction in the winter of 21-22. Perfect. Thank you. All right, Amanda, our other public site researcher, what good project updates do you have for us this week? Yeah. Um, I have two roadway projects. Uh, one is with the city of Mesa. It's Broadway Road from Lazor to Spur. Um, they are reconstructing the road. They want to include gutters, sidewalks, and uh, various other things. Uh, they are planning to issue a design bid build instead of a CMAR. So they were originally going to do CMAR, but they're not going to do that anymore. Um, but they want to bid it out the fall of this year, and Kimley Horn is the design firm for that one. And then the other one is with McDot, uh, Maricopa County Highway 85, um, from 95th Avenue to 87th Avenue, and then from 95th, oh, excuse me, sorry, never mind, 95th to 87th. Um, they want to include two lanes in each direction uh, with bike lanes, sidewalks, a raised median, um, and some other improvements throughout the section. And they are planning to advertise in May of 2022, and Kimley Horn is also the design firm for that project. Excellent. Thank you for those. All right. Jeffrey, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Fantastic. I am opening up 
the database, our, our database service here. And I am looking at project ID 3426, Aura Apache. What can you tell me about this project? Aura Apache is an upcoming 296 unit complex on Apache Boulevard near McClintock Drive that will be replacing the Apache Palms RV Park. Uh, this new community is going to be primarily a uh, four building group cluster of up to four stories in height, as well as clubhouse and fitness center surrounding a six level parking garage. They will also include 30 townhouse units in three story buildings on the outer perimeter of the site to serve as a buffer. Trinsic Residential Group is both the developer and the general contractor, and they have selected Orb Architecture for the design. Uh, we don't have a specific groundbreaking date yet, but the project is still going through the City of Tempe design review process, so it's probably safe to say it isn't going to start for at least a few months. Always got to have at least one of those mute, unmute kind of errors for video, huh? All right, so I was just poking around here. Uh, the things that I love on this project is, um, you know, first of all, it's a really big improvement for that area, um, but also the yeah. full contact information in the, in the database, all these documents, the design review study session agenda, presentation, uh, all the different comments and contact information, all the descriptions, everything we can give you in there. So great project. Thank you, Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. Gonna move on. 3472, project ID 3472, Arise Arroyo Norte. What can you tell me about this project? Yeah, so the other uh, uh, new project I have for today, Arise Arroyo Norte, is another multifamily community, but this one is going to be a 170 unit single family for rent community. So just like many of those communities, it's going to uh, focus on a lot of green space, including a central private park with pool, cabanas, and dog park. Uh, this one is actually in extreme North Phoenix and actually has a new river address. So I think that might be the first new river project that I've ever talked about. Uh, Family Development is both the developer and general contractor for the project, and they've chosen Danielle and Associates for design. Uh, this is also very early on and actually has a long series of city meetings and approvals to get through before construction will commence. Perfect. Thank you for those. Yeah, that's past the outlets north on I-17. That's always like the end of the world or end of the city limits. Yeah, so, north of Anthem and everything. Yeah, that's crazy. So again, full contact information for the right people, for the design firm, uh, the contractor, and the owner. So great, mm -hmm. great project lead again. Perfect. Do you have any other private project updates for us today, Jeffrey? Uh, yeah, I have two updates, actually. Um, the first one is going to be on a project called Second Street Multifamily, uh, which is appropriately on Second Street near Thomas and Central Avenue in Phoenix. A formal general contractor has not been awarded, but the developer Blueprint Capital was comfortable saying that Hardison Downey will likely be the general contractor and that construction by them will start in late summer. And then the other one I have is going to be, thankfully not multifamily exclusively, it's Southbridge 2.0 in Scottsdale. Uh, that was the large redevelopment that was planned last year on several scattered sites throughout central and downtown Scottsdale that was ultimately denied. But we got information saying that the developer Spring Creek Development is actually going to submit a revised plan for it soon. And this new version has dropped a lot of the various aspects to it, but has added 500 residential units as well as 120,000 square feet of retail space and a 140 key hotel. So no further information on that, but that project did come back to life. So pretty big deal considering it's like many acres of downtown land. That will be a dramatic change for downtown Scottsdale for sure. Thank you, Jeffrey. All no right. problem. If you'd like more information on any of these specific projects that we mentioned today, for more information on any of the services that we offer, whether it's the digital magazine, the Databex online platform for major construction projects, or we do uh, host live industry events. They used to be in person. Someday we will get back to that. Uh, please do reach out. You can find any of our contact information online on our various websites, asbex.com, data-bex.com, or bex-events.com. We'll see you again next week.